China and Turkey continue suffocating Russia's trade. And Dubai jumps on that bandwagon. Vladimir Putin to visit China again. Something that he'll travel to bow. Russian scientists are suspended from working on the Large Hadron Collider. Mir payment system gets booted from Armenia. Oh no! Russian ambassador in the USA blames the Americans of being impotent, angry, and frustrated. Woohoo! France saves one Russian at a time. People in Hague haven't forgotten of Vladimir Putin just yet. And the biggest news of the week, Putin is officially now illegitimate and non-handshakeable in the European Union. Mm, like he was before. Welcome to another world news as seen from Russia update. Howdy, howdy, friends. My name is Konstantin and welcome to Inside Russia, where usual Russia is explained by the unusual Russian. Every Wednesday, I give you Russian take on important news. Without further ado, let's jump straight to news number one. And it comes from two countries, China and Turkey. Nothing extraordinary happened in the last week in both countries, except for both China and Turkey are tightening their trade policies towards Russia. In the previous editions of the World News Updates, I mentioned that multiple times that both countries have radically changed their trade relations with Russia. Both countries' banks have started refusing taking payments from Russian banks, and the Chinese have gone even further. They have closed a few major Chinese banks in Moscow, in Russia. Russian propaganda at first was saying, oh, it's just a technical difficulty, glitches. They will be rectified and fixed very soon. And then, as time went by and the problem worsened, Russian propaganda shut up um, as if Chinese bank problem did not even exist. And when that happens, when Russian propaganda goes into um, absolute silence mode, as if nothing is happening, then we know that it is serious. And then this is how we know it is serious. And it was just proven yesterday that is really serious, but at a little different angle. It was announced that Russia's new president, well, old president, well, uh, um, fifth term president, the 25th, going on a 25th year, um, well, anyway, the new president, Vladimir Putin, will pay a visit to China very soon, right after he's inaugurated as the new, well, not so new president of Russia. Now, after his inauguration, and I'm putting it into parentheses, his inauguration is planned on May 7th. The first visit Putin is going to take is China. Uh, it's kind of not looking good for Putin. It'll be his second visit to China since the late last year. It appears that he flies to China much more often than needed, and it's not seen well by ev everyone, well, anyone, everyone, by many, at least outside Russia. As if he goes to beg China for something, and he does. Last time he went, he begged to sign a contract for importing Russian natural gas, and he failed. And this time, he'll beg for Russian banks and money transfers to clear up that problem. Because he knows that if nothing happens, nothing is rectified, and that situation keeps on happening, and the payments don't go through, Russian trade will stop. And what happens then very soon if the payments will not start, you know, 
flow in between the countries. In this case, his fifth presidency might end abruptly and it'll be very short. He knows that, that's why he's going to China. And after he visits China, he will most likely visit Turkey. There are rumors about that. Well, at least um, he will be trying to convince Turkey's president Erdogan to allow him to come visit Turkey. And what about Russian propaganda? Well, they just start pushing this narrative that Putin's visit to China is normal and is expected to visit Russia's close, closest ally first thing after the uh, being re-elected is, is a normal practice. The closest ally, yeah, right. And Russian people, they keep on buying it. And that is absolutely incredible. Um, but wait, that's not all about the bank's news, banking news today. The next news also comes from banking industry, financial industry, but from a different country. The United Arab Emirates, specific, specifically from the Emirate of Dubai. Dubai's largest bank has started canceling Russian clients, closing their accounts. In other words, kicking them out. Dubai has become one of the main channels of money flow with the outside world for Russian businessmen, crooks, oligarchs, uh, Silaviki officials. Um, it all started after the West imposed large-scale sanctions for the invasion of Ukraine. Well, I shouldn't say it, it, it all started. It, it had happened before, only not at that scale that's been happening lately. Uh, let me tell you a thing or two about Dubai. Financially, anything goes to Dubai. Tax-free, money doesn't smell attitude. That's where all Russian Silaviki politicians, authorities, crooks, thieves, transfer their wealth to Dubai. From Dubai, you know, it can travel all over the world. I have two personal stories to tell you. I visited Dubai one year ago in January of 2023, uh, right after New Year, when it was a little cheaper. And I stayed um, on a, in a place called Dubai Palm in a hotel. And I had the entire palm, uh, the artificial island, in front of me. And it was a Russian holiday, January 14th came out on the balcony, and I could not believe my eyes. Entire branch of a palm in front of our hotel turned out to be belonging to the Russians, the deputies of uh, Moscow State Duma. They organized private concert. They brought a Russian performance star, and they were having a huge party. Tons of booze, a lot of people were drunk, and they were toasting. And I couldn't believe it. They were saying, well, we had the best year ever. We wish that all years, following years, will be like that financially. I mean, that's January 2023. 2022, war with Ukraine started. So many people were killed in Ukraine. Ukrainian cities raised. Russians were killed, you know. And those folks were celebrating. They own houses. Uh, in Dubai, on the Palm, the most expensive ones. They have bank accounts. Um, that's Dubai for you. And another personal story, a short one. When, when, I, when you walk around Dubai, you see tons of Russian sales, Russian-speaking salespeople pitching you luxurious apartments, properties, villas out there. And they act as if all Russians who come to Dubai are millionaires and have pockets full of millions of dollars, okay? And that's probably close to the truth. But anyway, <clears throat> Russians enjoyed freedom of this jurisdiction for about two years. And two years later, after the start of the war now, under the pressure from the United States, this financial window of opportunity is Closing. Dubai banks have begun closing down accounts and companies 
that uh, belong to Russians or doing business with Russians. Dubai's main state-owned bank, Emirates NBD, actively welcomed Russians before. It began uh, servicing the Russian oil trade in large volumes and opened a division to work with wealth wealthy Russians seeking refuge for their capital. And who are those wealthy Russians are? Silaviki, the authorities who were stealing from the Russian budget, you know, from Russian taxpayers. But in the recent months, the United States has begun to exert strong pressure on the United Arab Emirates. The representatives of the Ministry of Finance and the State Department came to the country multiple times. Several local companies that traded Russian oil in violation to the sanctions were sanctioned in individuals that um, owned the companies were sanctioned. And the key point here is that hugely important, hugely important for the banks all over the world, not just in Dubai, is that in December of 2023, a couple of months ago, the U.S. Treasury received official permission to punish foreign banks whose resources help circumvent sanctions and work for the Russian military industrial complex. Voila! Turkey, then China, now Dubai. Uh, and Dubai will be very painful for Russian crooks to lose. And guess what? Other banks all over the world, in jurisdictions that are currently allowing Russians and welcoming Russians, they will be thinking twice and then they'll be closing down sooner or later. Unless... Um, they want to be placed on the U.S. sanctions list. Another news is from um, CERN, the European Organization for Nuclear Research from the very heart of Europe. 500 Russian scientists will be suspended from working at the Large Hadron Collider. The European Organization for Nuclear Research will cease cooperation with hundreds of specialists who are associated with any Russian organization. CERN representative Arno Missalier said the suspension of the cooperation agreement will come into force on November 30th of this year. He also recalled that CERN does not receive funding from Russia. And um, I quote, We are preparing for other groups to take over for the tasks at the Large Hadron Collider in the future. I unquote. CERN is the world's largest lab of high energy physics. It's located in one of the, uh, on the border of Switzerland and France near Geneva. CERN includes 23 countries. But Russia is not among them. Basically, what CERN is, is a symbol of what humanity can achieve working together. This is the very cutting edge of modern science, high energy physics. And I think it's one of those few things, well, perhaps not few things, but one of those things that humanity can be very proud of. But... Russia is not a part of it. Uh, before the start of the war in Ukraine, Russia had uh, a special status called observer at that organization. And in the summer of 2022, CERN decided not to extend the cooperation agreement with both Russia and Belarus um, after their contract ex expired in 20 expires in 2024. In other words, Russia and Belarus have been kicked out. And I think we all know what the reason for that was. It's actually very shameful. Russians are being kicked out of everywhere. Well, this is exactly what isolation looks like. Some Russians were um, lying about isolation two years ago. Especially lots of Russian authorities. Oh, we'll have our national science institutions rebuilt and 
uh, we will grow new Russian scientists who will work for the greatness of Russia. Isolation is good for us. Even after the scientists were kicked out of CERN, one of the top Russian scientists in Russia said, well, they just gifted us so many scientists. In reality, Russian scientists are running away from Russia and get canceled and banned everywhere in the world. Uh, and it's shameful, very shameful. Those scientists, those 500 scientists getting kicked out of Europe, they will not come back to Russia. They'll find a place somewhere else. Well, Russia's loss. The next news is also bank news. Oh boy, we have awfully lots of bank news today. This particular bank news comes from Armenia. Armenia, Russia's long-trusted ally, a member of ODKB, the Alliance for Safety and Security of the Post-Soviet Countries, and Russia's big friend, well, at least in the past it was. The cards of the Russian MIR payment system will not be um, working any longer in the ATMs all over the country. And the payment terminals of Armenian banks are also shutting down this MIR payment system. From March 30th, about 10 days from now, no non-cash payments at the terminals, uh, computer terminals, and cash withdrawals at ATMs of other banks in the Republic of Armenia will be unavailable for Russian users. What? Another betrayal. Another knife into Putin's back. Armenia, and you too? Oh, that's, that's what probably Putin is thinking right now. Um, well, actually... It's very logical that Armenia just jumps, uh, joins, joins this this trend, uh, this movement, because everyone joins it now. You know, in February 2024, the United States imposed blocking sanctions against Russian Mir payment system. After that, the termination of work with Mir cards was announced by two countries: Kazakhstan, Bereke Bank, and now Armenia. Others will follow us. You know, not too many, but I forgot. I, please forgive me. Don't worry, friends, especially Russians who are holders of this Mir, wonderful, miraculous Mir cards. Everything is under control. No worries. Who needs Armenia? Who needs Kazakhstan? Who needs Uzbekistan? Who needs all this stuff? Hold on. I hope you remember what uh, the, the stream that I made recently. They recently announced the launch of Mir payment system in ba -ba 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 -ba, Laos in all 15 terminals in the country. You can now go and pay with your Mir there, the, withdraw your cash and all of that. Laos, that is our answer. Well, not our it is the Russia's answer to, you know, this uh, evil, evil Americans who place sanctions. Laos will never sanction Russia. Well, I wouldn't say never. I can't say shut up. Just, next news. Well, the news actually comes from the USA, Federal District of Columbia. That's the next news. The news is um, coming from place where you don't expect news to come from, Russian embassy, from Russian top ambassador Anatoly Antonov, the ambassador of Russia to the United States. It's like cream of the crop among the ambassadors. Uh, Russian ambassador to the United States said that the sanctions against Russia are a ridiculous step, ridiculous. And it is an indicator of the impotence malice of the American administration. I quote the good ambassador. The ridiculous step of the administration is kind of demonstration of impotent anger and frustration of local authorities and political strategists that are betting on 
damaging and influencing Russian society through uh, the relocators and traitors. And it's not going to work. I unquote. So you understand the relocators, the relicants, they're me. People just like me who <laughs> fled Russia, disagreeing what Russia is doing to Ukraine, uh, running away from it, okay? So um, I guess according to the good senator, uh, American administration was demonstrating that it is trying to influence Russian society through us, okay? Folks, this is news. This is huge news. I didn't know that, but now I know. And tomorrow morning, I'm going to go and have breakfast at Tashkin Breakfast Club. And there will be probably 30 to 40 people. And I'll tell everyone, you know what? The plan is uncovered. It turns out that American administration is working through us to influence Russian society. And that's not working, okay? And everyone's going to be excited because, you know what? We would love to go to the United States of America. I think most of us. But it's just, um, it's kind of like out of reach. They don't even get us, get close to the embassy. Uh, we are off, 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 you know. We can't get visas. We can't get in. We can Somehow, miraculously, they're um, influencing Russian society through us. Must be by Bluetooth or something like that, you know. In our heads, like wirelessly, not talking to us, not... All right, anyway. <sighs> now, another thing is interesting. The sanctions are the ridiculous step of American administration. Demonstration of impotence, anger, and frustration of American authorities. Interesting. The good ambassador must have been must be uninformed. Perhaps Russian diplomatic services are still using pigeon mail, and the news are simply traveling there so slow. I mean, the pigeons would have to fly from Moscow all the way, you know, um, over Europe, and then the Atlantic Ocean, and it's winter, and then they're probably taking their time. Well, let's see. Hmm. Let's see. So it's impotence. It's nothing is working, right? The sanctions just a, a miserable attempt. Let's see. Russian assets of uh, Russia's central bank abroad, three hundred thirty billion dollars, have been frozen and most likely will be confiscated from Russia. China has stopped receiving Russian bank transfers, and that's just recent. Uh, and the Chinese banks are closing and leaving Russia. A Chinese manufacturer a couple of years ago saw an opportunity um, that all the Western car manufacturers were leaving Russia and then decided to corner Russian market. So this manufacturer um, established itself in the Russian market and started um, exploring opportunities to Manufacture cars, okay, and abruptly left a couple of weeks ago saying basically, I'm not speaking in diplomatic language, I'm not as sophisticated as a Mr. Russian ambassador. Basically, the Chinese told Russians, Hell with you, we're leaving because we're afraid of the sanctions. And all of a sudden, the sanctions, I mean, let the Chinese get spooked. What do they get spooked so easily, okay? The sanctions not working. They should listen to the good ambassador. But they got spooked. They closed their factory and they left. They went back to China. Now, the Chinese banks are getting closed in Moscow. What are you doing? Don't do that. Listen to the ambassador. That's just impotence of America. Turkey has closed its ports to Russian goods and oil. And Turkish banks are denying bank transactions to Russia. And they fear secondary sanctions from the USA. That's just, they don't understand. It's just impotence, impotence, you know, anger. Uh, it's empty, empty threats. Russian oil is under so many sanctions that are actually working now. Russia has lost world's most lucrative market for oil and natural gas, Europe 
And this is the, just the most important thing, major, major. I could go on for much longer. And the Russian uh, ambassador says uh, the sanctions are just demonstration of anger and then the empty. So good ambassador Anatoly Antonov, tell us whether you were uninformed waiting for the pigeon mail to arrive or perhaps you're drinking Russia's finest, Stoli. Or perhaps, I don't know, it's a long shot, but perhaps just, uh, you know, uh, weed is illegal in D.C. now. I'm not sure if it is, but, but what if it is? Uh, that actually could explain a lot. Dear Ambassador, listen, chill. Take a chill pill. I don't know, do something nice. Watch Zionfield reruns, something, you know, relax, because we all know you're not going to stay at your job for a long time. So enjoy while it lasts. Why, why are you so angry? Chill. Chill. That is my advice. Oh, let me take a sip of this um, wonderful English breakfast tea. English breakfast at Uzbek midnight. How about that? At this point, I want to ask you three things real quick. First, please hit the like button if you like what you are watching right now. Second, please subscribe to the, to the channel if you haven't done so, so you won't miss any further updates. Three, please share this in your social media accounts. That helps a lot. And I guess number four is please comment. Let me know what you think. Like news, dislike news, find them interesting, useless. <coughs> Even if you have not greatest opinion, let me know. I need to know. I need feedback. And if you have nothing to say, please drop me a couple lines of encouragement, nice words. I love reading those. Thank you so very much. Well, another news comes from Ru uh, <laughs> not Russia, France. France. Um, for the first time in recent history, France gave asylum to a Russian who fled from mobilization. The French National Asylum Court granted political asylum to a Russian, and he's hiding his name. He doesn't want to be disclosed. Russian citizen fled Russia after receiving a summon in uh, September of 2022 for mobilization, and um, this case is being reported by a French attorney, member of the Paris Bar Association, Yulia Yamava, who represented the interests of the plaintiff. All I can say is that uh, every time I hear about a case like this, I... What's the right word? <sighs> Makes me happy. I rejoice. Um, viva France. Um, I relate to this situation because my second cousin is a, in similar situation in the city of Toulouse in France asking for political asylum. So uh, I hope he gets it too. If anyone watching this and has a good attorney in Toulouse you can recommend, please let me know. The next quick news comes from Hag. I think I tackled down how to pronounce this word finally. Hag. In Russian Gaga, in, 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 in my language, my version of English used to be hog, and now it's hag. The new president of the International Criminal Court, Tomoko Akane, expressed confidence that Russian President Vladimir Putin will be held accountable for the war crimes in Ukraine. Responding to a question from journalists, she quoted a Chinese proverb. Um, heaven's revenge is slow but sure. And I absolutely agree with Ms. Uh, Tokomo, uh, Tomoko Akane. It is slow but sure. I have witnessed it many, many times. And that, my friends, somehow is not reported in the Russian news. I looked or, or I searched, I, I monitored, I, I, I searched everywhere. And they just seems like they don't like to talk about Hag in Russia any longer, as if Hag does not exist. 
Well, it does. It does exist. And we still remember of Hag. Folks, at this point, um, if you're asking yourself how you can help out a little bit, uh, buy me a coffee would be cool. Not required, but greatly appreciated at buymeacoffee.com. Becoming a patron and becoming a sponsor of this channel will get you great benefits. Um, I have started posting important news from Russia, the news I find important, uh, three times a day, three news at a time, so nine news every single day, morning, in the afternoon, and at the evening. So it keeps patrons and um, sponsors busy reading them. So if you want to read those news, please become patron, become sponsor. So far, I've gotten... Um, fantastic feedback so far it seems like sponsors and patrons enjoy reading the news very much so thank you so much let's go to the next news and this is the last news the last but not least and um, i think it's the most major news for today and it comes from the european union and Mm, this news is the direct result of Russian president election that happened last week. Uh, all 27 members of the European Union are preparing a joint statement about the presidential election in Russia. The head of the European diplomacy, Joseph Borrell, called this president elections unfair and unfree saying they were based on repressions and intimidation. Additionally, Borrell stated that uh, the new sanctions against Russia's uh, related to the murder, Russians related to the murder of Alexei Navalny will be approved um, very soon. The Minister of International Affairs of Lithuania, Jan Lipovsky, stated that the country does not recognize Putin's victory in the elections. Lawlessness cannot give rise to law. And coercion, oppression, and uh, falsification cannot give rise to legitimacy respected in the international space. Therefore, we do not recognize uh, these elections and uh, do not call this falsified and imitative procedure an election because unfortunately it looks more like a tragic farce and parody and i just quoted um, the honorable lithuanian you know what i was thinking about this phrase it's quite complicated and sophisticated uh it's um diplomatic language but heck i couldn't have said better myself british minister of international affairs david cameron said that in uh, these illegal elections there was neither a proper choice for voters nor independent uh, international observers. His government colleague, Defense Secretary Grant Sheps, wrote, wrote in the column in the Telegraph, that's an honorable English newspaper, that at the end of this fifth term, Vladimir Putin will be in power just as long as Joseph Stalin was, and that he already behaves like a modern Stalin. Now, I was thinking about that too, and I again said I couldn't have said better myself. The French Ministry of International Affairs said that in Russia, the conditions for free elections have not been fulfilled. And German Minister of International Affairs, Annella Burbock, said that Germany condemns elections without a choice in Russia. Um, which one of this... Um, when, when this joint statement, joint, uh, when the all 27 countries of European Union join together and make this st statement about, promise statement about Russian elections. I can't wait. I definitely am going to cover that. Any you know old folks, um, a little bit from myself. 
I just gave you the news that I found important. And I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, what a bunch of great, honorable people the Europeans are. Okay. Um, you see, this is so sad for me. The farce has been going on for two years. Ukraine is getting destroyed. The Ukrainians are killed. The Russians are killed. The international community, uh, the global village, does not recognize Russia's president anymore. And for a very good reason. And they're acting as decent people should be acting in this situation. And this is the lowest of the low. But something is telling me it's not the end. Um, and this is this ashamed Russian is uh, finishing the world news update on this note. Thank you so much for coming. Check the other video I made on how Ukrainian drones are effectively disrupting Russian economy. I'm going to put a link right here. And um, this is it. Please come back tomorrow. I'm going to do video part two on the oil refinery attacks where I actually am going to show you real life footage of how oil refineries explode. Thank you so much. Carthago de Lenda Est.